So you probably clicked on this video because you're going back to school and you want to improve your grades. And so in this video, I hope to give you some tips to start the new school year successfully. Hey everyone, I'm Thomas and I've completed both my GCSEs and my A-levels, which went pretty well, which is why I wanted to give you my advice for achieving the top grades. Let's start with my first point, which is to form good habits. Now on average, it takes around 66 days to form a new habit. However, it can be made much easier using visual cues and reminders like a sticky note. Now, one of the best habits I've ever made is to come home from school and complete my homework and assignments the day that they are set. This way, if you ever get stuck, you have time to ask your friends or teacher for help, which allows you to meet the deadline. It also reduces your stress because you don't have to think about it for the rest of the week. It gives you plenty of free time at the weekends to relax, and it really helped me stop procrastinating, so none of my work piled up to the point where I fell behind or didn't want to complete it. Other habits like getting into a good sleep schedule and having breakfast in the morning are also very important as well. Moving on to number two, we have organize yourself. Now, I know you've probably heard this a lot before, but it can really help your mindset when you come in from a long day at school, as I know it did for me. And if you see your desk full of books and paper, you're just going to discourage yourself from wanting to complete more work. So try and have a minimalist setup like shown on the screen, or check out some productivity YouTubers setups like Udoka Fentelman or Ali Abdul and model yours around that. This gives plenty of space to work on your laptop as well as past papers, etc. Coming in at point three is surround yourself with like-minded people. I was reading an article on Forbes the other day which said we need people who challenge us and push us to be better. The right circle of influence raises the bar, helping us to set new expectations of ourselves. And this can be used in schools too. So if you want to be the best in your class and get the highest grades like an A star, then you need to be friends with others who are already at that level. This can help boost your performance because you are sharing information, challenging yourself and helping each other, which will land you one step closer to the top grades. Number four is to set a goal and write it down. The reason for this is because according to a psychology professor, Dr. Gail Matthews, you are 42% more likely to achieve a goal if it's written down. And this number only increases the more you think about it and discuss it with others. Maybe you have an exam coming up and you want to get an A, then try this out and it may help you to focus your mind and enable you to put in the effort as you work towards that goal. After all, if there is nothing to aim for, you're unlikely to put in your best performance. Next at number five is be proactive. Make your own situation better instead of letting opportunities pass you by. So for example, if you need to decide a university to go to, you want to put the time in to research all of your options so that you can make the decision with full confidence that it's the right one for you. On the other hand, maybe you just have a test coming up or an essay to write and you don't really want to revise for it. But believe me, it's worth your time to do so. If you've tried your utmost in everything you do, you have nothing to worry about because what more can people ask of you if you've tried your best? Lastly, number six is collaborate. Whether this is with your siblings or friends at school, help each other and challenge them with questions which will help reinforce your knowledge. One of the best ways to learn a topic is to be able to teach it to someone and this will help you remember content for exams. I'd also just like to add, never be afraid to ask when you need help. Even if you have to wait until the end of a lesson to ask your teacher something, that's what they're there for, to help you. Plus, it will put your mind at rest knowing the answer to your question. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been of some use to you, and if it has, consider subscribing as this really helps me out and it's completely free. Other than that, I will see you in the next video.